Now, I have owned many, many AKs over the years, and I've owned some good ones, and probably only one bad one, which was uh, kind of a parts kit build century affair that was uh, going back a few years. But the platform, whether it's Yugoslavian, whether it's Russian, whether it's Polish, whether it's Bulgarian, uh, has been very good to me in terms of reliability. And then uh, that's not even getting into the versions of uh, the Egyptians and the Chinese, which also are reported to be very good models of the AK variants. Now, this is the SLR 107, and this particular one has a fixed stock. You're going to see, and I'll, I'll put this up for you to, to, uh, to click on and look back, but way back early in my days doing YouTube videos, I had a SLR 104 FR, which was in 5.45 by 39. This is in the quote unquote traditional AK caliber of 762 by 39. And the only difference between that design outside a caliber choice, of course, and this is this has a fixed stock. Whereas uh, the uh, SLR, whether it's a 104 or whether it's a 107, if it has FR, that means it has a folding stock. Folding stock was cool and probably the best folding stock mechanism that I've seen in the many semi-automatic rifles I've owned over the years. However, I, I didn't find it a necessity in something that was highly practical uh, because at the end of the day, you're not really saving a lot of space. So it didn't make a lot of sense other than cool factor. So I specifically was not looking for that. I was looking for a fixed stock variant. One of the reasons is if I at some point get tired of this plum colored furniture, which is really growing on me fast um, and want to put uh, wooden furniture on it, I could certainly do that a lot easier than with the folding stop kind of scenario. So if you're somebody that likes that flawless blue steel kind of finish on a firearm, you're probably not going to like this one too much. It's got a military style Parkerized finished. You can see right there, by the way, an optics attachment rail right above the trigger. And um, uh, one of the parts that makes it U.S. compliant is the buttstock. It's stamped U.S. I'm also going to show you where the cleaning kit is stored. It's a little spring-loaded trap door in the buttstock. And uh, that comes out just simply by depressing that trap door. It works in conjunction with the cleaning rod. And then you simply pop it back in. It sits in there. It's really nice, it's secure, and it doesn't rattle around. Taking a look up top, you see that it does have that tangent style sight you see on so many of the Soviet rifles. And the dust cover is ribbed, which is something that you see on all the Arsenal firearms. This one was manufactured by the Bulgarian Circle 10 plant, as marked right there. Arsenal is imported into the U.S. by Arsenal USA out of Las Vegas, Nevada. But the rifles... Uh, are made in Bulgaria. So when you look at the receiver, you're going to see that it's stamped uh, Bulgaria, imported by Arsenal USA. So you have to have a certain number of U.S. parts. Currently, Bulgaria is not importing these into the United States. The, 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 the milled version is what you can get, and that's called the SAM or the SAM-7. Uh, it weighs close to a pound more in my opinion, there's absolutely no advantage about having a milled AK. I don't find them to be more accurate. Uh, the very first AK-47s were milled, and so a lot of people think, well, that's the way it was supposed to be done. And actually, no, the very first AK-47s were intended to be stamped receivers, but the Russians at that time just didn't have good reproducible technology for that. So they started out milling them, but very quickly went to a stamped kind of uh, scenario. So uh, I believe in, in, with the milled AKs, you're carrying around more weight uh, than you need to and you're not getting anything in return. Just my opinion. Now, what you're gonna find though is with the Arsenal factory in Bulgaria, they do have a lot of military contracts. And because they have those military contracts across the, the world with various countries, um, when they fulfill those contracts, certain things quit coming to the U.S. And the SLR-104 is one of them. 
and the SLR 107 is another one. Okay. When I did the uh, review of my SLR 104 several years ago, I said it was my favorite rifle. And, and at the time it was, it's just that the ammo availability, especially in 5.45-39 was, was limited and already harder to get. Um, so this time around, uh, there wasn't a, a choice to replace that with another of the same version in a brand new configuration like this one, it's new in the box. Uh, so we went this route, um, and uh, my good friend, uh, the owner of Max Guns and Ammo in Savage, Minnesota, was kind enough to uh, to hang on to some of these that he got in last year, and um, and I purchased this from him. So this is not a review rifle sent by Arsenal. This was bought with uh, my own money, and 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 purposely so. I knew what I was getting. And what I was getting was a very fine shooting rifle with uh, a great trigger on it. Absolutely love the trigger on this. Very predictable. It's about what you'd want on something like this. Not too light. It's not a target trigger, but certainly beats the heck out of a typical mil spec trigger. Uh, the rifle is uh, shoots just like an AK, as you can imagine. A little bit of snap in the back on the shoulder, but no recoil to speak of. And as you can see, standing unsupported at 25, pretty happy with those results. Uh, it may be possible that I need to make an adjustment on that front sight. And uh, we're going to wait to shoot it at 50 yards from a supported uh, standpoint before we make that determination. These are just really super solid affairs, guys. And yeah, it's an AK. And yeah, other people make AKs. Uh, but arguably the best factory made AK you're going to get is this. These are just really cool rifles. And uh, I think without a doubt, if, if you're someone who's interested in AK and you're willing to pay a little bit more than what you would with a Century Wasser or uh, a Yugoslavian um, NPAP or something like that, you can get something like this. You have to do a little bit of looking to find the new ones now, but they are... They are available at different places. I've seen them. And who knows when these will begin to be imported back in the U.S. But unlike the Russian rifles, where it's the U.S. government saying, you can't send them here anymore, we can't import them, uh, this is more along the lines of what the, the, the manufacturer is able or willing to do. So uh, that's at the whim of that particular manufacturer. Although I could see imports of certain classes of weapons in particular this black scary one, or okay, it's really a plum scary one. Uh, something like this might be uh, on, a, on a short list for executive actions from, uh, from presidents who do those kind of things when it comes to uh, backdoor firearms control. Now, depending on when you're watching this video, it may or may not be news that the Biden administration and the U.S. Department of Justice has put an all-out ban on the importation of ammunition and firearms made in Russia. If you get an opportunity to pick these one of these up, I suggest you do so. I've seen these anywhere from $1,800 to $2,200, and they're probably just going to continue to go up. And a lot of you guys, and I'm in this group too, can remember when you could get some of these uh, uh, older Wassers, or the Cougars, or some of these things from Romania, for 400 bucks and all i can tell you is those days are not only gone they're long long gone they're never coming back if you want a decent ak you're going to spend at least a thousand bucks um and if you want to want to get to the what i consider the best option you can get again for a factory built it's going to be this i've had a, a sega made at the ishmash factory uh, that was a russian sega uh in the past and the arsenal I owned at the time outclassed that. I believe this would outclass it too, and that might be a point of argument for some of you AK guys. So if you are someone who wants to talk about comparisons between an AK and an AR, or say, you can keep your AK, I've got an AR, it's more accurate, things of that nature. Uh, oh, I'm not getting rid of my ARs. But this is just a very cool firearm. It's very effective. It's very reliable. What these are intended to do using open sights is hit a man-sized target reliably and consistently out at two, 250 yards. And that's exactly what you're going to get out of this particular firearm. 
Um, if you want to get into these absolutes and super light triggers and other things that, that really get away from the original designs, uh, you can make AKs more accurate, you can make ARs more accurate, and things of that nature. For gun news and reviews, this is David Drake. I appreciate you watching, and uh, we'll see you again soon. For more content like this, please subscribe to Gun News and Reviews.